Have you ever found yourself locked out of your home late at night? Finding a qualified locksmith to help you out of a stressful situation can be tough, and soon it may get even tougher. Lawmakers in Springfield passed a law that would place Illinois among the majority of states that do not require locksmiths to be licensed. Some worry that could leave the door wide open to questionable practices and reduced consumer protections. Carol Marine and students from DePaul University's Center for Journalism Integrity and Excellence investigate, and Carol joins us now. Welcome back, Carol. Always good to see you. Thank you, Brandis. You know, there's this moment of panic when you find yourself locked out of your house. What do you do? You struggle somehow to quickly find the right person for the job. We start with a woman in Old Town, Jenny Hobbs, who says she was left unprotected after calling a locksmith she thought she could trust. It was near midnight at this LaSalle Street apartment building when Jenny Hopps said she and her roommate found themselves locked out of their unit. A phone number posted in the lobby was, Hopps hoped, the solution to their problem. There's a sticker and it says, call the locksmiths. So we call the number. Mega Locksmith and Security is the company she says she called. After arriving to unlock her door, she said the locksmith told them. There was absolutely no way into the door, he said, uh, unless he did a special route. And so he did, she said, and broke her lock. These are the photos she took. And he said he would fix it, but it would be an additional charge of a couple hundred dollars to do that route. She says the locksmith finished the job, sort of. We don't realize till that night, hey, this lock is like turning. And I was like, well, that's what locks do. And my roommate says, no, like it is going 360 degrees in the door frame. What happened to Jenny Hopps and her roommates is not an isolated occurrence, according to Tom Johnson of the Better Business Bureau. Consumers also have alleged in their complaints that they'll come in and have a door lock replaced and it'll fall apart within a couple of days. It'll li literally be loose and no longer working. And when they call back, uh, they find out that uh, the guarantee, the verbal guarantees mean absolutely nothing. Out of money and frustrated, Hops wrote a Yelp review of her experience. They never apologized for their awful work, and they never sent anyone back out, even after promising to do so. It cost $350 for a job that was not done properly. Do not work with these people. The owner of Mega Locksmith and Security declined to do an on-camera interview and did not respond to emails dealing the specific questions about Hop's complaint. The Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation, or IDFPR, manages the licensing and takes consumer complaints. In Illinois, over 360 individuals or companies, including Mega Locksmith, are licensed by the state. Among the requirements to get a license are passing an examination, passing a criminal background check, registering your fingerprints with the state, and paying up to $300 in fees. By their very nature, locksmiths hold the key to a family's security. In 2029, the law that regulates locksmiths in Illinois will sunset, the result of legislation approved in Springfield. State Representative Edgar Gonzalez, Jr. of Chicago was a legislative co-sponsor. The argument was that, you know, it was during the COVID pandemic, you know, there was a lot of people were just having a rough time and we wanted to remove as many barriers as possible. And so one of those was um, excessive licensing. Ann Gruber, who owns Ashland Lock and Security, believes loosening requirements is wrong. There's nothing worse than feeling uncomfortable in your own home and that you're not safe. She also sits on the board of IDFPR, which oversees the conduct of locksmiths, including those which are not licensed by the state. I do know that most regulation happens because abuse occurred. That abuse, she says, includes a long list of unlicensed locksmiths. We call them trunk slammers in our, in our world because they're guys who work out of their cars. They're not associated to a brick and mortar entity. They don't have oversight and training. They don't have supervision. Take, for instance, a company we found on Yelp called 24-7 Skokie Lock and Key. 
Hi, my name is Carol Marine. I'm a reporter doing a story on locksmiths. Can you tell me where you're located, please? The question put to the man on the other end of the line went unanswered. The company's address on Yelp, which was just updated this April, is 7800 North Lincoln Avenue in Skokie. This is 7800 North Lincoln in Skokie. North Shore Community Bank and Trust, not a locksmith. After some prodding, the man who answered our call said the company is a mobile service and transferred us to a manager. Son of a gun just got hung up on. Once you take away the licensing, literally anybody can do this. For Jenny Hops, being locked out at midnight was terrifying. I don't know anything about locks, and he also took advantage of that. Something Ann Gruber worries will occur more and more. When asked who would regulate locksmiths after the law sunsets, she answered, No one. It becomes the Wild West again. Currently, only 13 states require locksmiths to be licensed. One national group that oversees the locksmith industry says, at least for the moment, Illinois has the strictest laws. As for Jenny Hops, she told us after many calls, many complaints, and that bad Yelp review, she finally got her money back. Brandis. And Carol, being locked out can be traumatic. What should consumers do? It's tricky because in the moment, do you say, are you licensed? Do you want the guy to fix your lock? What you do is you pay with a credit card because if it turns out badly, you can cancel the charge and complain to Visa American Express. And sometimes that is meaningful. All right, good to know. Carol Marine, thank you so much. You're welcome.